Welcome to the Timbal Tavern, folks, where this week, I'm going to take a look at what is going down on AEW's annual pay-per-view on March 7th, where we got ourselves a revolution. Alright folks, hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Timbrel Tavern. I'm Al Timbrel. Now this week, of course, we are going to take a look at AEW's weekend pay-per-view coming up on March 7th this weekend. That is AEW Revolution. So, you know how it goes with pay-per-view predictions on this podcast. I'm going to take a look at every match going on and give my honest predictions on what could go down. So let's get started with the show then. Let's see what we got for Revolution. So... A lot of stuff has been going on over the last couple of weeks, uh, especially with months as well, with a lot of rivalries being set in stage as well for this pay-per-view. And before we get to the matches, I just want to say that, yes, it's true, Paul White, a.k.a. The Big Show, is on AEW now. That is absolutely crazy. Um, when I heard the news that uh, White was coming to AEW, I was shocked because I honestly thought that... Um, Big Show was going to be a WWE guy for life after he signed with WWE, but um, yeah, you know, it's, it's absolutely crazy that uh, they've, they've got him here in AEW. Apparently, they couldn't come to a come to terms on a contract with WWE financially, so um, White made the move to AEW, and seeing him on Dynamite uh, just this week was absolutely awesome. I thought it was really, really cool. So, um, of course, he's going to be at uh, Revolution. And he's going to announce that uh, a Hall of Fame worthy talent, that is a huge surprise and a huge asset, will be appearing at Re Revolution for, for a contract signing. Now, I am really excited to see who this person could be. I've got my ideas on who it could be. Like, I was thinking it might be someone like um, Rob Van Dam or maybe CM Punk. Someone someone like that, maybe. I, I have, I'm not quite sure who it could be. I've definitely ruled out The Undertaker because he's retired. He'd never, he never, uh, he wouldn't change shift at this at this stage of his career. He's done. So it won't be Undertaker. And a lot of people are saying it could be Batista. But I don't think it would be Batista because after seeing his retirement against Triple H at WrestleMania in 2019, I don't think Batista would make the jump. And besides, he's uh, busy in Hollywood now as well. So I think um, Batista has probably called it a day of his career. I mean, he made the announcement uh, after WrestleMania that he was retired, he was done, and he, he only wanted to come back so he could have his last match against Triple H. So it definitely won't be Batista, but I think my, my big choice, my number one choice for this would probably be Rob Van Dam. And in a close second, CM Punk. But uh, we'll have to wait and see who Paul White signs. I think it's going to be really cool, whoever it is. It's going to be a really nice surprise, so... Can't wait to see what they do with that. So, let's talk about the matches then. So, we've got uh, the first match i got on the card right now. I've got the Young Bucks against the Inner Circle, Chris Jericho and MJF with Wardlow. So, this is the tag team match uh, for the tag titles. And uh, after seeing what uh, Jericho and MJF have done to the Young Bucks over the last couple of weeks, beating up their father and everything, I think my money's going to go to um, Jericho and MJF because... They're a great team. They they work well together. They're natural on the microphone on the mics. Um, it's just absolutely cool. They're just absolutely they're a really good team. And um, but it, it does make me wonder. Maybe Sammy Guevara could get involved in this. Who knows? He might be want to get some payback into Jericho and MJF after he quit because of what happened. But who knows? But um, I think this is gonna. Go, I'm gonna give this uh, prediction over to the inner circle. They are definitely gonna win the tag team titles, I think. Uh, the Young Bucks just ain't going to cut it. And uh, Jericho and MJF are going to win the tag titles because they are better than you, and you know it. <laughs> so that's my prediction for that match. And then the next match I got then is Team Taz, Brian Cage and Ricky Starks versus Darby Allen and Sting. Now, this is something I actually wanted to talk about um, a while back, but I just never found the time to do it. But... Sting is in AEW now. He's come out of retirement after he announced his retirement at the Hall of Fame in WWE in 2016. And um, I can honestly understand why he'd want to come out of retirement. I mean, he wasn't treated that well in WWE. I mean, he lost to Triple H at WrestleMania. He injured his neck against uh, Seth Rollins later in the year. And that led to his uh, career, in career, career ending. 
So I can see why he'd want to come back. And when I saw that Sting was going to be wrestling in AEW, I was concerned. Because, you know, it's his neck, and plus he's 60-odd now. So him coming out of retirement for a few matches, I, I was very skeptical. But um, after I got a little bit more faith, though. I, I did think back to when Edge came back with his neck and everything. Because neck injuries, for me, are always the most concerning when it comes to wrestling injuries. Because, you know, it's, it's a dangerous profession, and, you know... I'm worried that if someone comes back from a neck injury and they botch a move or something, that could lead to something really serious happening. So I, I was concerned about that, but after seeing Edge come back, I felt a little bit better. But um, I was still quite skeptical. And But I think what got over the concern was when Sting took the powerbomb from Brian Cage a couple of weeks back, and I was like, oh, well, maybe he's got a chance. I mean, Sting... Sting look, looks great. He did the stinger splashes and the scorpion death drop and everything. Uh, it's like he hadn't missed a step after all those years in retirement. So maybe there's a high chance that, you know, Sting will, uh, <laughs> bit of luck, you know, Sting will come out of this pretty good. So I got, I think, um, I think Sting at least has a year or so left in his career. Maybe he can ride the wave one more time as long as he can. We'll just have to wait and see. So who's going to win this match? I'm going to give it to Darby and Sting. I think they're going to be the ones that, um, that come out of this victorious and maybe it'll lead to a program between Darby and Stin for the, for the TNT title or something. Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. I'm looking forward to seeing it and I hope, uh, hopefully the street fight really delivers in this, at this pay-per-view. So following that then, we've got Hikaru Shida versus Ryo Muzanami. I think I said that right. For the women's world title. I'm going to give this to Hikaru Shida. Because, you know, I like her as women's champ, as the women's world champion. I think she's really good. Uh, she's got a lot of talent, and she's really cool. So, I think I'm going to give this to Hikaru Shida, and it might lead to something down the road with uh, Ryo Mizunami. So, we can only hope for that one as well. Excuse me. So, following that then, we've got the big money man. <laughs> the p I can't say that without giggling. What the hell? <laughs> the big money match between Hangman Adam Page... And big money, Matt Hardy. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so, I, this has been building up for quite a while. I mean, Matt Hardy um, has gone back to his big money gimmick, I think. Which is pretty cool. And Hanman Adam Page has been courted by the Dark Order to join their ranks. So, um, it, it's interesting to see what's going to happen with this. Um, apparently, whoever lose, whoever wins receives the loser's 21 first quarter earnings money-wise. So, if Hardy loses, Paige will get 100% of Hardy's earnings for the first quarter of the year. So, that would be interesting. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Maybe it'll lead to um, a Dark Order invasion, and maybe Hangman Adam Page will... Uh, maybe he'll just join the Dark Order and maybe beat Matt Hardy. That would be interesting. That'd be a really good, uh, good thing, because I think they've been building that up for uh, quite some time. So... It'd be, I'd be looking forward to seeing what they do with that. So I'm going to give this one to Hangman. Matt, I love you, man. But I think if Hangman's going to have the Dark Order uh, help him out for this one, then Paige is definitely going to win this. So uh, Matt better pay up very big. <laughs> You'll have to pay up some really big money there. Oh my god, that was a bad pun. Don't, don't ever have me do puns again on this show. <laughs> so there's that. And then we've got um, the next match then is the Face of the Revolution ladder match. For a future AEW TNT Championship match. So we've got Cody Rhodes against Scorpio Sky. Versus Pento El Zero Miedo. Versus Lance Archer. Versus Max Caster. Versus a to be announced opponent. So there's a mysterious opponent going to appear in this. So um, I think what they might do is. The mystery opponent might be the guy. Who the who Paul White brings in. Um, late earlier on in at uh, Revolution, maybe that will, that's what they'll do. They'll put him in the uh, the ladder match because that would be pretty cool. So that's my theory, and um, I think I'm going to give this one to Lance Archer because I like Lance Archer. You know, the Murder Hawk. He's just he's just freaking brilliant. The things that he can do as a seven foot guy, and the fact that he's got the great, arguably the greatest promo cut of all time in his corner, Jake the Snake. That is, that is. That you gotta give that to Lance. I mean, come on. I like Lance. I like Scorpio Sky as well, but I'm gonna give this one to Lance Archer because you know he deserves another shot at the TNT title. So I want to give this one to Lance. So that's my prediction for that one. 
And then following that, then, it is Miro and Kip Sabian versus the best friends Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor. So um, I think this one's been building up for quite some time since uh, that wedding with Miro. And um, I think um, <laughs> that was a quite, quite a funny wedding. I mean, wrestling weddings never go well. That, that's the one thing you need to, need to know. Weddings and wrestling never go well. And what happened on Dynamite in that wedding, that definitely proved it. So who's going to win this one? I want to give it to Miro and Kip Sabian, really, because it's nice to see Miro, formerly known as Rusev now, find his foot in AEW. And I think, you know, they deserve a little bit of payback after what happened in the wedding. So I'll give this one to Miro and Kip Sabian, and I think it's going to turn out uh, pretty well. Might be a bit of humor in that as well, so I'm looking forward to see what they do with that. <laughs> and then there's also the Casino Tag Team Royale. So there's a lot of teams going to be in this. You've got, you got like three versions of the Dark Order. You've got the Inner Circle, Santana and Ortiz, Butcher and the Blade, Private Party, the Seidel Brothers, Gun Club, uh, SoCal Uncensored, The Natural Nightmares, Varsity Blondes and Jurassic Express. Now, who could win that, I wonder? Well, it's tough to pick out of these guys. Like, I'm going to just pick one. I would like to see Jurassic Express win and run along for a tag team. Uh, and definitely have a run for um, for the tag team titles. Maybe go up against Jericho and MJF. That would be a funny program, actually, to say the least. I think that would be some really good booking right there. If Jurassic Express win that and go after Jericho and MJF. So that would be pretty cool. Um, Natural Nightmares, Dustin Rhodes, and QT Marshall. I'd like to see them do it as well. But I think, personally, I think the the one that might win it is the Dark Order. I mean, they've got a high advantage there. I mean, they've got three teams in there of the Dark Order. So, uh, it could be, it could, uh, the odds are in the Dark Order's favor. So, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. So, I'm going to give this one to Jurassic Express, because I really want to see that program with, um, uh, with, uh, Jericho and MJF, because I think that'd be quite funny. <laughs> so following that, then we've got the um, uh, we've got the the main event. I I believe it's going to be the main event. Kenny Omega versus John Moxley in something I have never seen before, but this will be interesting. An exploding barbed wire death match. Now I've heard a little about these exploding barbed wire death matches. Um, I think. They used them a fair bit in Japan, like years, years ago. It's like usually accompanied like barbed wire ropes, and then there's a large barbed wire explosion board in the ring laced with a small amount of C4. And whoever loses that, whoever loses it, is the wrestler that gets blown up. But um, it's going to be absolutely crazy. I mean, this is some ZZW shit right here. So this could be... the. It's definitely going to be the most violent match in probably wrestling in the last 10 years or something, it could be, it's at that potential to be that mental. And it's going to be so, so hardcore that Jim Cornette's going to have a heart attack ranting about it. I can tell you that now. <laughs> it's just absolutely crazy. And um, I, I don't know who I can pick to win this. Like, I want to give it to Moxley because I like John Moxley. He's really badass and everything. But I think Kenny Omega might have some uh, bit of an advantage with... Uh, you know, the Good Brothers, uh, Gals and Anderson, and he's got Don Callis as well. So I probably gave it to Kenny Omega. You might keep the title for a bit longer, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. And, you know, I, I it's going to be Kenny for me. I'm going to pick Kenny. And uh, he's hoping that uh, it's going to be, that match is going to really deliver. It's going to be, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be absolutely mental to see what they do with that. So I'm looking forward to seeing what Revolution brings now Sunday night. I am very excited for that. It's really, really exciting. And there's going to be a, there's a lot of hype going around in this pay per view, so hopefully it delivers, and it might be the best wrestling show of the year. So let's hope that that's the case for uh, AEW Evolution. So uh, that's Revolution. That's that topic covered. So before we wrap this up, we do have a little bit of an announcement. So you probably remember I've spoken about a EFED called the European Wrestling Foundation on this podcast a couple times. Uh, the EWF closed in the end of December. But um, I've been talking with the, uh, the the owner of the WF, and he's given me permission, and I am happy to announce that there will be an EWF one night only show being produced, um, and will be up uploaded hopefully 
at the end of March. So that's what we're, I'm working on right now. And we've got some of the folks back as well to do some uh, promos for that. So keep an eye on, definitely keep you posted on that. It's going to be really exciting. And I can't wait to see um, what the final product's going to be. So hopefully it turns out pretty well. Also, we've got the, uh, the mockumentary I've been producing as well as a college project. I'm happy to announce that has been, f has been finished. And it will be uploaded up to YouTube very soon. It'll tell the story of a character named Timbers Dude Walker who aspires to be the greatest YouTuber of all time. But you can see he's a bit of a loony, so you're about to find out why. And that wraps us up for this week's episode of the Timbal Tavern. Thank you so much for watching. This is Al Timbal signing off, saying I will see you next time for another exciting episode of the Timbal Tavern. Until then, my friends, stay safe and ta-ta for now. Thank <laughs> you.